Yellowstone showing strange signs. Supervolcano subtle changes from magma deep beneath surface. This is what experts have measured. Scientists based in Colorado can measure the strain put on volcanoes in the United States. They've detected molten rock beneath the surface of Yellowstone National Park. That's where the Yellowstone supervolcano, of course, is located. Their discovery is not dangerous, and technologies allow them to track this very closely. The researchers analyzed the effects of slight environmental shifts on volcanoes. It's by Maggie O'Neill on Daily Mail. From, of course, USGS and Yellowstone Volcano Observatory. Information stating volcanoes experience the strain from pressures just like humans, but now the geologists say they can measure exactly how much physical strain is on them. So this is, this is a way of predicting what's happening. Researchers monitoring the Yellowstone supervolcano, which is in Wyoming, detected molten rock about three miles below the surface. So you're standing there and three miles under your feet, you've got magma. While it's not dangerous, the scientists warned that slight shifts in the environment around the volcano can and do add up, and they create significant changes over time. The technologies they use can detect changes in the volcanic strain smaller than the width of a hydrogen atom. So that's pretty good. They're very sensitive. Geode geodesists David Menson and Glenn Mattioli say that these measurements can advance science's understanding of the volcanic activity in this very dangerous supervolcano. They say it's the most dangerous in the world. Their work is published in Yellowstone Caldera Chronicles and it explains what these measurements can tell us about the National Park's plumbing. Mencin and Mattioli describe the comparison between the strain put on humans and the volcanoes in the report. The report says we all know what it's like to experience strain. The pressures of everyday life can leave you feeling contorted and stretched. It turns out volcanoes are no different. They experience this type of strain as well. When a volcano experiences strain, it changes shape. Specifically, the shape of its subsurface rock changes. And this process is called deformation. The number of forces can cause deformation. If it's a magma pressure or the amount of water filling the nearby lakes change, the volcano can be subject to deformation. These pressures can be measured by the GPS technology combined with other tools, including borehole strain meters and borehole tilt meters. Scientists at a nonprofit base in uh, uh, Boulder, Colorado called UNAFCO, these are the uh, UNAFCO uh, monitors that they have, maintain this equipment using to be used to measure the deformation levels throughout the regions of the western regions of the United States. The UNAFCO operates uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the particularly sensitive to deformation of ground surface monitors, and so they have an important role to play in monitoring the activity of Yellowstone. The borehole strain meters are able to detect changes that occur as far away as 820 800, feet below the ground surface at Yellowstone. And these changes do not have to be drastic for the scientists to pick them up. Mensin and Matoli said that they can be as minuscule as one tenth, ten millionth of a width of a human hair or smaller than the width of a hydrogen atom. So that is pretty sensitive. But they are important because over time, these nearly undetectable shifts can add up to significant change. They say sometimes these tiny strain measurements yield big surprises. The scientists give an example of the work being done to illustrate how advanced technology used to measure these changes is. Yellowstone, they say, strain meters are sensitive enough to record surface waves on Yellowstone Lake. And as we know, they're important because even those, from what the scientists have told us, the waves on the lake could create an earthquake over the lake, which sits on top of the Yellowstone roof of the magma chamber. So that's a risk from what they said in one of their past uh, announcements. 
They say, here's the surprising part. The strain meters are hundreds of feet deep and up to 12.5 miles away from the lake, yet these water waves can tell us something about Yellowstone's deep volcanic plumbing system. Even beside the potential devastating risks, the plan, they have a plan, oh, also, okay, we'll go into that later with the NASA plan, but the author said computer simulations reveal that magma under the Yellowstone caldera, of course, is affecting the lake's motion, deformation, and the strain meters confirm this. The researcher said these independent observations agree with other instruments at Yellowstone, like seismometers, that indicate a zone of semi-molten rock starting about three miles under the surface. But the measured volcanic strain is not dangerous. This is what Mencine and Matoli stressed clearly. Their analysis said these findings are no cause for alarm. The fascinating data being gathered is a testament to the marvel of technologies that allow scientists to analyze strain on volcanoes. The measurements and the methods that are based on the findings are examples of how sensitive instruments located on and just below the Earth's surface are helping us learn more about the deep secrets of Yellowstone and also other volcanoes. Now, uh, could an eruption uh, at Yellowstone be prevented? Well, NASA believes that they have a plan drilling up to six miles or 10 kilometers down into the supervolcano, which means that uh, if the magma chamber is, uh, the top of it is three miles down, Drilling six miles down means that they're three miles into it, or could be anyway. Uh, they want to. Be, they have a plan of drilling down into the supervolcano beneath Yellowstone to pump in water at high pressure and cool it. Uh, despite the fact that the mission would cost three point four six billion dollars, NASA considers it the most viable solution, using the heat as a resource also poses an opportunity to pay for a plan uh, and it could be used to create geothermal plant which generates electrical power at extremely competitive prices at around 10 cents per kilowatt hour. But this method of mitigating and subduing the supervolcano has the potential to backfire and trigger the supervolcano to erupt which, is, which NASA is trying to prevent. Drilling into the top of the magma chamber would be very risky of course Carefully drilling from the lower sides could work. Even besides the potential devastating risks, the plan to cool Yellowstone with drilling is not simple. Doing so would be an excruciating slow process that one happened at the rate of one meter a year, meaning it would take tens of thousands of years to cool it completely, and still there wouldn't be a guarantee it, wouldn't be it would be successful for at least hundreds or possibly thousands of years. Of course, uh, Mike Poland, who is in charge of the Yellowstone volcano, claims they just want anybody touching it or getting near it at all, not to uh, tamper with it whatsoever, because we may have a super eruption on our hands. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece. In Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.